Welcome to the Falmouth Art Center in Falmouth, Massachusetts on Cape Cod. I'm Laura Reckford, Executive Director of the Falmouth Art Center, giving a video tour to one of our current exhibits, Fakes Inspired by the Greats, because the Art Center has had to close temporarily due to the coronavirus, we wanted to be sure everyone had a chance to see this wonderful, creative, inspired, and sometimes humorous exhibit with work by local artists who live in this region. Almost all these works are for sale, though some have been sold already, so if you are interested in buying a piece, please call the Falmouth Art Center at 508-540-3304. You can go to our website to see close-ups of some of the pieces at falmouthart.org. We start off with a watercolor painting by Chesley Chapman, an art teacher at Mullen Hall School and one of our pottery students, Oranges on a Branch, inspired by Winslow Homer. Next is Three Geraniums by Shirley Hersey, one of our longtime Falmouth Art Center members and supporters. And a work by another one of our longtime members who is an artist known locally for her whimsical found art sculptures. This is Sue Beardsley's painting called Garden of Delight based on the work of Johan Miro. The work on top is a beautiful watercolor by Arlene Graham after the great English romantic painter J.M.W. Turner's 1840 painting, Venice looking across the lagoon, and below a photo by one of our board members, Rob Goldsboro, Petite Fleur, after Pablo Picasso's famous sketch of hands holding flowers, and by Margaret Nowak, after Joaquin Soroya's painting, Maria La Guapa, Soroya lived in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. And a piece by well-known Falmouth artist Hilary Osborne, Le Beau Shot, after Cecilia Beau. Carol Ann Knox has an oil on board piece, an homage to Paul Clay's Red Balloon. And below, Mary Schiff has In the Spirit of Cezanne, a still life in oil. Tom Morton's painting, after Pierre Bonnard's Le Désert, an oil painting that also has a hand-painted frame. Interestingly, this, the original of this one, which was painted in 1940, sold recently through Christie's Auction House for 1.3 million British pounds, double its estimate. Two oils by Amy Rader. She's a local professional photographer here in Falmouth who has also been a painting student at the Art Center for years. On top, my version of Wheat Fields with Crows, inspired by Vincent van Gogh, and my Monet, inspired by Claude Monet's Water Lilies. Carol Raymond did this impressive still life in oil brass bucket inspired by Emil Carlson, an impressionist who lived from 1853 to 1932. The work above by Marlon Fulton, she painted this watercolor Dreams of Venice inspired by John Singer Sargent. And below, Wendy Vogel's still life in oil is onions after Pierre Auguste Renoir. Here we have Shirley Hersey's watercolor of tiger lilies and a familiar looking piece. Marianne Matthews has done an acrylic painting of one of Van Gogh's famous self-portraits. And below, Marlon Fulton again. Her acrylic painting is called Iconic Personified after Cezanne's paintings of Mont Saint Victoire. Tom Geegan's watercolor, The Farewell, after N.C. Wyeth, recently sold here at the Art Center. Very timely piece as this year's the 400th anniversary of the Pilgrims landing in Provincetown and later Plymouth. Some people forget that they landed in Provincetown on the tip of Cape Cod first. And here is Barbara Gaffron's watercolor. She calls it Mimicking Morris for Morris Lewis, a painter who in the 1950s pioneered color field painting. 
Doreen Kelly, in her pastel Hopper Comes to Nobska, imagines one of Edward Hopper's famous paintings and how it would look off the shore of our own Woods Hole here in Falmouth with Nobska light in the background. And below, Mary Markow's pastel of water lilies after Monet. Linda Emerson's watercolor called Plein Air Painter after John Singer Sargent. And Wendy Vogel's lovely pastel Mother and Child after Mary Cassatt. Dave Williamson's photograph, he uses pigment ink on rag paper, is Livy, inspired by William Wegman and his model Faye. Uh, of course, Wegman celebrated the Weimaraner breed of dogs in his photos. Secret Hecker's Oil, Water Lilies, a la Monet. And the piece on top, Mickey Lovett's Through My Window, inspired by printmaker Joy Silverstone. It's a monotype with serigraph. And below, Carrie Fradkin's pastel, Afternoon Trees, was inspired by Wolf Kahn. And we have another painting inspired by Monet's Water Lilies. This one is by Sylvia Delaney. Her acrylic is called Lily Pond in the style of Claude Monet. And the piece above, again, it's Mickey Lovett. It's called Passing Through, inspired uh, by printmaker Anne Moore, a monotype with Shin Collet. And this piece, some humor with an oil painting by San Lyman of Woods Hole, one of the Falmouth Artist Guild's earliest members. It's called Calder Without the Wire. It's after Alexander Calder. Shelley McDermott's Tree of Life is a painting using alcohol inks inspired by Gustav Klimt. And here we have Jan Orff's lovely watercolor, La Petite Robe by Berta Morisot from 1875. Ruth Leach's oil painting is Fishing Boats on the Beach at Saint-Marie after Van Gogh's famous painting. Piece on top, Deborah Iapini has Here's Looking at You Monet using gouache and watercolor pencil. And Beverly Tyree has After Cezanne, an acrylic painting also of Mont Saint-Victoire. We have Zachary Schiff, Chop Tui, after Edward Hopper's famous painting, Chop Suey. Another humorous painting by San Lyman. This one's just called Chagall. And of course, she has a, someone looking at a painting by Mark Chagall. A humorous take by Falmouth, uh, longtime Falmouth Artist Guild member, Doris Epstein. Uh, she gives us Manet Changed Genders. She has done Edouard Manet's famous painting called Olympia, which is in the Musée d'Orsay in Paris, uh, using men instead of women in the painting. Another humorous take, Cherie Pardikis's painting in acrylic called Baby Vase after Van Gogh's sunflower painting. And Mike Markow gives us two acrylic paintings inspired by Mark Rothko. On top, number 14, 1955, and on the bottom, untitled, 1952. More humor, this time from Bob and Sue Beardsley. This life-size scolding figure in fiber is called Whistler's Mother-in-Law. David Rogers gives us a lovely charcoal from Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel. And Marie St. Hilaire has a piece remembering Pablo, an oil painting inspired by Pablo Picasso. And also by Marie St. Hilaire, we have Where's Degas after Edgar Degas's famous paintings and sculptures of ballerinas. Here we have Betty Jameson her oil painting, Please Not Again, inspired by the contemporary artist Robin Smith. Lisa Errico's Whisper in Red, inspired by a painting by James Galindo, a 
contemporary artist. And we have David Rogers again with a pastel this time, Dutch girl, after Jean-Baptiste Cruz. Here we have a very interesting sculpture. This is made of barbed wire and handmade paper called Mask of Pain after Picasso. Betsy Payne Cook, one of our painting instructors, has The Welcome Home Kiss by Gustav Klimt. And Carol Ann Knox, Monet Cliffs and Sailboats at Port Villa is a fiber work by Carol Knox. By Karen Dugas, Goldfish, it's an acrylic painting. Susan Elizabeth Clark does a very original, creative, mixed fiber piece inspired by Picasso called The Girl with the Flaxen Hair. And finally, Mary Schiff, Hopper's Provincetown Church Today, an oil painting of a building that Edward Hopper painted back in the 1930s. And that's our show, Fakes Inspired by the Greats. I hope you were inspired. Call us at the Falmouth Art Center at 508-540-3304 to purchase any of these works of art. And feel free to check them out also on our website at falmouthart.org.